And while officialdom in Canberra is obsessing over the voice, the chaos that's the daily life for so many Indigenous people continues. Saturday night, the Australian newspaper reports today, was another night of violence on the streets of Alice Springs. Here's some of the iPhone footage sent to me over the weekend. Local businessman Darren Clark says the latest episode is about the worst he has seen. The street violence that we had in the early hours of Saturday morning was some of the worst that I've seen, Laura. Um, just just horrid, horrid scenes. Uh, people on the ground being kicked and stomped on, you know, and even a female, a young female being attacked. Um, it's just, just horrific, just horrific. And then, and then for some news to go into the pizza shop and um, go beyond the counter and arm themselves with knives, uh, with a knife, you know, that's, you know, it's going up another level. The reason why the government and the mainstream media don't want you to know about Alice Springs, don't want to put it on the news every night, is because they know Alice Springs undercuts their arguments for a voice. We don't need another voice in Alice Springs. The town's already got two magnificent Indigenous voices in the parliament, the local Labor MP, Marion Scrimshaw, and of course, Senator Jacinta Price, formerly the Deputy Mayor of Alice. Both these strong Aboriginal women say that what Alice needs is more police, less grog, and the ordinary law to be enforced. But these are not the voices that the Prime Minister is prepared to listen to. He only wants to hear from the politically correct types that say this mayhem is a result of intergenerational trauma caused by colonialism and racism. That's yet another reason why this activist voice is such a bad idea. It's going to make it harder, not easier, for the government to do the obvious things needed to sort out these problems. Because we all know what happens in remote Australia and what needs to change. As Tony Abbott repeated again today. The kids have got to go to school, the adults have got to go to work, uh, and the police have got to keep communities safe. If that's what we demand in white Australia, it must be what we demand in Aboriginal communities. It's the kind of politically correct poison that's stopping us, and that poison via the voice will likely make a bad situation worse.